What's up everyone? Today we're doing some maintenance. Today we're doing some well-deserved maintenance on the 1LE. Weather's been better, we've got some sun, that means the tracks are opening up. So I'm gonna show you what I do to maintain my car for the track season. So one of the first things you need to do is get your car up on a lift. And if you don't have a lift or a buddy with a lift, well, you're lying on your back, unfortunately. So I'm fortunate here to have a lift at my disposal. A good buddy of mine let me do it, uh, use his lift. And we're just gonna show I'm not a Mopar guy, really, but I'm becoming one because, because of this car right here. So this is uh, my buddy's 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT 392 Scat Pack Wide Body. Whew, that's a lot to say in one breath. Anyhow, this car is fantastic. Drop a comment below if you ever want to see a review on this car and see what this thing's capable of because this is a phenomenal car. The eight-speed tranny, the power delivery, this car does a lot more than what it looks like it should on paper. It punches way above its weight class. Anyhow, so you got to get yourself a lift and I'm very fortunate to have one. All right, so here are my fluids of choice for the car. Starting with the differential, I go with GM or AC Delco Dextron LS Gear Oil. Part number is 10-4034. This is recommended in the owner's manual. It is, does contain the limited slip friction modifier. And I use this in the rear end or the differential because the 1LE is a little temperamental. I mean, I've never had a problem with it, but I hear a lot of things and I've read a lot of things online, especially at, with early mileage that they're groaning, um, they get noise out of the rear end, and people say drop the fluid as soon as possible. So uh, this is a secondhand car. I don't know who's done that before me. So I'm gonna get this done before this track season starts. For the transmission, I'm gonna run Royal Purple Synchromax High Performance Manual Transmission Fluid. So this stuff apparently works really, really well. Um, smoother shifts, less parasitic loss, and lower temperature. And for our engine oil right now, I'm gonna run this Castrol Edge 5W30. Um, the reason I'm running this right now and not like a 040 um, is because I'm not tracking the car right this minute. When I do get to a track day, I will dump this fluid and I'll run 040 in the car as per the owner's manual, which is the preferred uh, fluid for uh, high RPM, high temperature applications. And so right now I run this fluid because I get it from Costco and it's cheap. And so I can run this fluid not only in the 1LE here, but I can also run it in my 1981 Camaro that has a six liter LS. And I can also run it in my 2007 Chevy Avalanche, which has a 5.3 LS. And for a filter, I run an AC Delco PF64F. So this is your more or less your professional brand AC Delco filter. This is probably what came on your vehicle from the factory. And I don't run uh, any other filter really. Maybe a Wix I could run once in a while, but um, I definitely don't run the orange filters, if you know what I mean. The Fram filters, stay far away from those. All I see is bad reviews. So maybe Fram used to be good, not anymore. So run your AC Delco filter. So AC Delco filter, a good quality synthetic in the engine, change it out for track use. Um, a good quality GM or AC Delco uh, fluid for the rear differential, and then a really good high quality Royal Purple for the manual transmission. So that's what I run, and of course, we got some fluids for the human body here, but we'll get to that later. So we're gonna get the car up in the air. We're gonna start dropping some of this fluid and we're gonna switch it out. So one of the things that helps with these cars is to buy a set of jack pads like this. Um, you can get them from ZL1 add-ons or I think this set honestly might've been from Amazon. Could be a knockoff set. Um, and that's gonna really help you where you place your lift pad. 
So it looks like I'm just lifting on the body, but underneath that pad, that black round pad for the, for the hoist, there's actually one of these jack pads. So make sure you do get some sort of jack pad on your car if you're going on a lift. You don't want to lift by the pinch weld and uh, it's going to make life a lot, lot easier. All right, everything's sturdy. We kind of wiggle the car a little bit. It's nice and firm, so away we go. All right, well, if you've never seen under the bottom of a 1LE, here you go. Um, so to drain the rear differential fluid, we use just a basic 3 8 square drive in here on a breaker bar, and we'll break this free. Very easy to break free, actually. It makes me wonder. And we'll hold this up nice and close. Hopefully we can see that, and away we go. Okay, so here's the rear diff plug, and look at all that sludgy stuff. That's all metal. So it's a good thing to change your diff. This little magnet here is definitely, definitely covered in metal. Did the last person who owned the car ever change it? Is this the original fluid? I don't know. I've got 65,000 kilometers on it. So it could be original fluid. Judging by all the comments, this is really, really overdue, but um, I've had no issues with the diff, so no real reason to uh, suspect anything. But yeah, a lot of uh, sludge on here. And when you look at the fluid, it looks pretty sort of murky, pretty cloudy. Almost a few little sparklies of metal in there, but I mean, I think that's some of that's normal, but um, good thing I'm changing it. All right, so after you install the drain plug, you need to torque it up. The torque on this is 24 foot pounds. And the fill plug on the side will go next. We'll put some fluid in. The torque is the same for the fill plug. All right, and here's the fill plug right here on the side of the diff. Uh, driver's side, we'll crack that loose with a 3-8 square drive, and then we'll put some fluid in. And we'll pump away. This cheapy Amazon pump actually works really good. And we'll fill it up. And they only pump a little bit at a time. So we'll pump away and we'll come back to this when it's done. Okay, second bottle now almost full. And as you can see, it's starting to just come out of the hole. When it starts to leak out of the hole, she's full. And we'll reinstall our fill plug. And again, the torque. 24 foot pounds. All right, and so for the trans, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and there's this little temperature sensor in the side, which is uh, takes a 22 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna drain from here. The other location is further back on the passenger side, and it's right over top of the transmission cross member, and fluid will just gush everywhere. So um, I've seen people do it this way, and it looks pretty safe to me. Quite a bit of thread locker on here. And I can see. A little bit of fluid. Boy. Well, there you go. Splashing away. Now, I can't imagine doing this when it's right on top of the cross member because it's it's messy okay and so the fill plug is just above the temperature sensor and a little bit forward so we'll break that with the old breaker bar and it's a pain in the butt to get the breaker bar in there so I recommend using a half inch breaker bar with a half inch to 3 8 reducer or adapter because that's just the right length to get around this line here and then we get it loose walk it on out and we'll use the same pump that I used on the differential fluid but first we just have to flush the line real quick all right so we'll just pump some of that synchro 
wax fluid through there and now you can see all that royal purple has replaced all that rear end or differential oil. Okay, so I got about uh, 3.7 liters in there roughly and, and some of the instructions say never to overfill these. So as you can see, there's not a bunch of fluid leaking out. What I did was I actually took a little bit out and I used a little coat hanger here to stick inside the hole and make a little dipstick out of it and I can actually measure how much is below the hole. So roughly about an eighth of an inch below the hole. It's pretty hard to measure that. So they should have put a sight glass or something on here if they're really that critical about the level. But uh, So we're going to put the uh, fill plug back in. There's still lots of Loctite on this one. So just wind it in and torque it up. I couldn't find the torque so we're just going to go snug. It didn't take a lot of torque to remove that. So. And the next is the engine oil. Uh, drain plug is a 15 mil. I've already cracked that loose and we're going to try to do this without getting oil everywhere so it will fire out and I do not have a glove on so <laughs> up the sleeves maybe so the engine oil on this was due it was uh, telling me I had like 10% life left so I normally don't uh, let the engine oil go down that low but my garage is full of 81 Camaro with a turbo kit in development so we had to wait for the right time and we'll uh, torque the fill plug up to 18 foot pounds and then the next thing we're going to do yank the filter I use one of these little filter wrenches they seem to work the best for me and I wish I had gloves on always make sure you fill your oil filter before installing it otherwise an initial startup there could be some starvation then stick your finger on there and wipe some of that fresh oil on the seal or the gasket and you're ready to put the filter back in. Next thing you do once we put the filter on, we'll, we'll put it on hand tight and we'll snug it slightly with the uh, strap wrench or the filter wrench. And then we'll go fill around nine and a half liters or 10 quarts of oil. Now when you're filling your oil in these cars, the, uh, the filler um, hole in the valve covers are actually kind of at an angle. So you gotta have the right funnel. This one's got a nice little sort of lip on it here. And just don't spill it all over. That's it for this video everyone, so thanks for watching. So now you have an idea of what it takes to change the driveline fluids on your 2018 Camaro SS 1LE or even your regular SS. Total cost to service the engine, the transmission and the rear differential, somewhere around 350 bucks Canadian, not bad. And it's also nice to understand how it all goes for yourself. Don't be that guy that takes it to the dealership. Try to get in there, get your hands dirty, it's way more rewarding at the end of the day and you save a bunch of money. And as always, please comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, really helps me out. And remember, the best time of the year to enjoy your project car is all year round. Even if you can't drive it, you can work on it. And that's enjoying it. Keep the shining side up. Take care.